Hello, this is Anthony, and welcome back to another video. As usual, if you'd like to follow along or read at your own pace, the slides will be linked in the description. Today we're going to be talking about conditional execution, a concept that's very important to writing 2 and 3 compatible code. Without further ado, let's jump into it. So conditional execution is when you're targeting a 2 and 3 compatible code base, and you want to run different code on different interpreter versions. The goals for these conditionals are to have very little overhead at runtime, and to be somewhat maintainable. We'll cover this a little bit more later. So the first thing that you should do whenever you're reaching for conditional execution is you should double check that your compatibility library, if you're using one, doesn't already provide a helper function which does the same thing. In my case, I'd be checking 6 for the functionality. If you find that, yes, you need to add some version-specific code, I'd suggest sequestering it into a compat module. This will make it slightly easier to maintain as you'll encapsulate implementation details into the compat module, and your consuming code won't really care about how it's implemented. Now we're going to cover a few best practices when crafting your conditionals. The first of these best practices is to avoid using try accept import error. This may seem like a reasonable approach because under normal circumstances you will get an import error for the Python 3 names under Python 2, but there are quite a few ways that this can go pear-shaped. The first way that this can go wrong is by far the most common, backporting. There are quite a few modules on PyPI which backport the Python 3 modules to Python 2 while maintaining the same names. Some examples of these are config parser, enum34, and Python future, which provides a whole suite of backported modules. When these are installed, suddenly your code is reporting that it is Python 3, when in reality you're actually using Python 2. The other problem is a little more subtle and really only comes up when your interpreter is in a broken state. This pattern can hide some failure modes and make it more difficult to debug a broken interpreter, because it catches import error. Now we'll cover a few ways of properly detecting Python 2. The first is to just trust whatever compatibility library you are using. This is probably the easiest and the one I would suggest using. If you aren't using a compatibility library, here are two ways to do this. One, by checking sys.versioninfo, and the other by ensuring that stir is an alias for bytes. While the first one requires an import of the sys module, the second one may be confusing, so if you're on the fence, use the first one. The next best practice is a pretty subtle one, but it helps ensure future compatibility for your code. This best practice is to avoid using if pi3 and instead use if pi2 else or if not pi2. The reason for this is in the not so distant future, Python 4 will be a thing. As written, Python 4 will suddenly be running the Python 2 specific code and most likely erroring. Guido, the creator of Python, has stated that Python 4 will just be whatever comes next after the last Python 3.x. I think we can take this to mean that Python 4 won't have the same level of backwards incompatibility that Python 2 and 3 have. So the takeaway here is to treat Python 2 as old and everything else as new, and lump Python 4 into just another Python 3. The next best practice is to avoid checking the interpreter version at runtime. One of our original goals was to avoid runtime overhead. The easiest way to accomplish this is to move the version-specific code into separate functions and implement these functions conditionally. Lastly, I'll leave you with a full example. Here we have two different functions, two bytes and two text, for converting the various string-like sequences. These two functions work in both Python 2 and Python 3. We also want to define a toNative function, which converts to a native string, which we defined in the first episode. To accomplish this, we first used what we could from our compatibility library. We also avoided import detection. We made sure to only detect based on the Python 2 flag, and lastly, we've avoided runtime version checks. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one.